so thanks everybody for joining. Uh, I am Gérald Bersini. I'm an applications engineer with MathWorks. I'm based uh, in the French office in Paris. And uh, today I've been preparing a, a presentation to talk about the satellite communication toolbox in MATLAB. Um, so we've got a slightly more than one hour. Uh, if you have questions, uh, I will stop by and ask, uh, you know, for, for if you have questions at the end of each chapter. And I'm going to start with uh, the agenda. So what we're going to cover uh, today. Here we go. What I would like to do uh, is just in one slide, uh, get back to an overview of the signal processing tools and the wireless applications we can address with, with MATLAB. And then we will talk about the satellite communication toolbox. So I will describe the use cases. I will show a few examples. I will try to, to provide uh, information about, uh, you know, the, this toolbox that has been introduced in 2021. So it's getting its maturity now, you know, after three years, we've got, uh, uh, we've been adding a fair amount of uh, features and I will try to describe the latest features as well. Um, I was requested also to, to provide some background information on antenna and antenna arrays modeling. Uh, of course, when communicating with satellite, we may want to focus the beam. We may need to have a, a very, um, a very um, uh, thin beam to be able to get a, a large gain to communicate with uh, satellites. So we will talk about this, um, this approach and we will see that uh, we can use antenna arrays that have been modeled in phased array toolbox uh, into satellite communication communication toolbox. So I will I will try to show that. And finally, I will just try to provide uh, uh, an introduction to software defined radio. Uh, so we will talk about the ability to generate HDL code or Verilog, but I'm just uh, just uh, targeting uh, targeting applications. So with code generation. So this is one of the feature. Uh, that is available. We are providing some reference application with uh, uh, with tools that go along with the satellite communication toolbox. So I will try to provide some background uh, focusing on the satellite communication and navigation uh, applications. Okay, uh, so let, let's get started. So first of all, signal processing and wireless application. What I want to do here is just provide an overview of the different toolboxes or block sets. So I will try to, to, to give some details about you know, the toolbox and the, and the block set. So the, the toolbox, uh, typically they are mainly for MATLAB. So it's uh, you know, functions, algorithm uh, that you will be able to use uh, as a script. So you've got the very, the very foundation, which is the signal processing toolbox. Uh, which provides the you know, digital filtering, um, FFT, all the transforms and all these kind of things. And it has its companion that is called the DSP system toolbox. So this is basically enhancing whatever is available here, but to process uh, streaming signals. So here we want to be able to process data uh, as, it, um, as it comes. And this is something we will talk a little bit later, especially when discussing the ability to generate code for embedded targets. So this is the building blocks. One thing that you probably are already aware of is that our toolboxes are in general built on top of others. So this is the very, the very foundation. And then we provide some dedicated toolboxes to, uh, to, to address a specific uh, field. So the communication toolbox is pretty large. Uh, pretty generic. Uh, it provides a modulation, demodulation, uh, channel coding, um, um, uh, equalization, uh, channel estimation, uh, channel modeling, this kind, this kind of basic features. And then what we've been doing is provide some dedicated toolboxes to address <coughs> specific standards. So here we will be mostly talking about satellite communication and we'll see what standards we, we want to deal with. Uh, and there are additional toolbox that I will uh, get back to later. Wireless test bench. This is, you know, an easy, uh, quick and easy way to 
to connect to software defined radio, such as the USRP modules. Um, and, and it now provides the ability to generate some dedicated HDL code as well. So this is uh, very interesting when we are in the prototyping phase. And then uh, the extension is the wireless HDL toolbox. And this is uh, uh, a toolbox that provides blocks. So it's called a toolbox, but it's it's mostly used <laughs> within Simulink. Um, I, so, so the name may be a bit confusing, um, but, but it provides some blocks that are optimized to generate uh, a very good HDL code, and, and you can, you can, you, you've got uh, uh, access to different settings so that you can generate uh, optimized code. So this is for the communication, and then if we keep on digging, there there are only two more. Uh, we've got products that are dedicated to RF and mixed signal, so I'm going to focus on RF. So in this category, we've got the antenna toolbox. Uh, so here. It's a, it's a tool dedicated to antenna and antenna arrays uh, with a, an electromagnetic solver, RF block set, uh, which is dedicated to modeling the front end, modeling the components and all their effects, the noise, uh, the uh, impedance mismatching, uh, the nonlinearities and all these kind of things. So this is, again, uh, yet another complement, depending on where you are working, at which stage you are in your development, you may want to have a, a pretty uh, a fast and rough uh, simulation at the very beginning. Just make sure that you know you, you are in the ballpark and then um, refine your, your model so that you include more impairments, more things that could go wrong, more uh, faults potentially. Um, and this is where uh, we can provide these type of capabilities. And finally, uh, Something that is called, you know, the product for FPGA, ASIC, and SOC, so system on chip. Here, when we talk SOC, mainly we are talking about an FPGA with one or multiple CPU on the same chip, and we want to use uh, these capabilities for onboard uh, processing. So we've got the very generic tool that is called AGL Coder that allows you to take a model uh, and turn it into uh, some AGL code. There is a complete workflow. It's not magical. It's not I press a button and my model is going to generate um, a code uh, uh, that is super efficient <laughs> by default. Uh, there is there is a workflow, but we provide this capability to go from very early uh, 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 stages where you are exploring different architectures and then go down to the code generation uh, so, so that you can quickly prototype, you can optimize, you can iterate and optimize your design so that you can also at the end have a complete workflow that allows you to go down to the code generation. And there are, there are more dedicated toolbox. So the two only I will mention here is DSP HDL toolbox. So here again, when there is HDL something, you know, HDL coder is the, the tool that takes a model, a simulic model and generates some uh, HDL code. And then we've got dedicated functions wireless HDL, DSP HDL, that will provide uh, blocks that have been optimized to generate good um, HDL code. So it's a, a potential alternative to buying um, IP cores that are, uh, that are, uh, uh, that provide some features here. You can integrate that uh, in a complete uh, uh, modeling uh, solution. <clears throat> and just for the sake of completeness, uh, a set of tools dedicated to, ra to radar. I'm not going to talk about radar today, uh, really focusing on satellite. So, and that's what I'm going to start with, a satellite communication toolbox. So, we, we've been introducing this toolbox in 2021. Uh, it's built, as you can imagine, on top of the communication toolbox. We've been working on communication toolbox first. Once we had all the main capabilities that have been requested by our users over the world, uh, we decided to focus on, you know, more segment, uh, and satellite is one of those. And when we see the the interest for satellite these days, I think it was a good idea because we are hearing a lot about 5G MTN uh, extension to, you know, non-terrestrial network for 6G. Uh, so this is this is a, 
a topic that is really very, very popular these days. So what can we do with the satellite communication toolbox? So first of all, we want to be able to uh, define uh, scenarios. So define where are the satellites, uh, where are the ground stations, uh, can the satellite see the ground station at some you know, moment in time, uh, animate the whole thing? Because of course, depending on the, <laughs> the heights of the satellite, it's gonna, it's gonna be moving. Uh, except if it's at the geo uh, uh, on the geo trajectory where it's going to remain fixed compared to the, the earth and so the first thing is we want to to generate orbits so from two line element files from uh, definition as a as a keplerian tube body or we can use different propagators depending on the fidelity you want to to um, to use and a few things that we really want to provide uh, as easily as possible, and I will, I will show that with an example. Visualize the access. So I would say uh, this, this is just a very easy to use function to say, okay, at this time, at this moment in time, the satellite can see the ground station. So here we are answering the question, can you see me or can you not? Uh, so especially in, in this type of scenario, LEO satellites, well, the satellites are going to be constantly moving. At some point, it will not be able to, to uh, see the, the ground station anymore. So this is what we're going to call access. Then it also provides some uh, information about the comms link closure. So here it's not, can you see me? It's, can you hear me? So depend, depending on the antenna, depending on the power, um, depending on the, uh, the channel uh, and the, the frequency, if there, if there are conditions that are difficult, uh, we we may uh, have a lot of attenuation. So here the, the answer we try to, the question we try to answer is, can you hear me? Uh, can we establish a link? And then see the field of view, attach antenna patterns and so on and so forth. But we will go into the details next. There is also a very basic things that we do uh, in general very early in the process is the link budget. Um, we, we've been we've been providing uh, an application, an interactive application, just because, let's say, 99.9% of our users are using their own uh, Excel spreadsheets, and the feedback we got is that uh, sometimes it, uh, at the beginning, it's um, it's easy to maintain, but it may become a, a little bit difficult over time, especially when you want to change the. Uh, the channel models and so on, and when different people want to experiment with that. So here we've been providing an application that I will describe a little bit later. Uh, the goal here again is just to be able to um, to establish <laughs> typical scenarios, uh, define the the distance of the satellite, um, define what is the the power, um, the, the 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 amplifier uh, power available. What type of antenna, polarization loss, what is the sensitivity of the receiver, and see if we can establish a link or not. So, this is a tool. We're going to talk about waveform generation. So, of course, this is the basic functions of MATLAB being able to generate waveforms. So, generate IQ samples, propagate in the channel, uh, get end to end um, uh, simulation, and so on. So, and these are the two. And the end to end simulation. You know, what is the BR of my communication? Uh, am I able to synchronize my receiver properly? Am I using the right uh, uh, algorithms and so on? So we're, we're going to go in, in details. So of course, what we want to address today is the many SATCOM standards. So we've been, we've been starting with the, the DVB-S2 uh, family, S2, S2X, uh, RCS, so because this is still very largely used. We also have been implementing the waveform that are compliant to the CCSDS. This is telecom and telemetry. We are working on 6G uh, with a 6G um, uh, evaluation library that is available today uh, for the 5G users. Um, and then there is also um, navigation. So of course, we've been starting with GPS. Uh, we currently have NavIC a first version of uh, the first example from IIC, and we are working on the other um, uh, on the other standards. So 
this is something that is becoming more and more uh, the norm. All the toolboxes that we provide, of course, we provide you know functions that are compliant to the standards. Examples, if you've been using MATLAB in the in the past, you know we are paying a lot of attention to uh, documentation examples. We've got this interactive uh, link budget application. What we provide in this toolbox is reference receiver designs. So when we say reference receiver, it's a receiver that is really able to work out of the box. Probably not the state of the art, but a receiver that is able to synchronize and decode data so that you can feed it actual data that you would be um, acquiring over the air and demodulate. Documentation as usual. The, the MATLAB source code, so MATLAB is not, uh, uh, the, the MATLAB engine is not uh, open, uh, open source, but here all the functions that are available now in this toolbox, they are completely uh, visible. You can select a function, right click, say open the function, and you will have the, the, the code. So that allows you to see exactly how we've been implementing a function. It allows you to copy paste, make some modifications so that it's it's uh, implementing your own uh, your own algorithm and so on. But this is very important. We are really trying to make all our functions as white box. And we can generate C code. OK, so we, we've had a, a release recently, uh, 24A, which has been released in March. Uh, and, and we've been adding a, a few capabilities. So in the early version of, MATLA, of uh, the satellite communication toolbox, we were able to model satellites and ground stations. And we were not easily able to, to model platforms like an aircraft, like a car, like a ship. And so we've been, we've been updating uh, the tool so that now you can have uh, satellites, ground stations that are fixed, but also moving platforms. So this is one of the, the nice features. So we can define trajectories. So we can define complete scenarios, including uh, elements that are moving in the in the scenario and not just the satellite and the ground station. Um, we, we've been providing a, a function also that shows how to optimize a link budget. So optimization is something that is becoming more and more important. Um, and I, I didn't mention that in the very uh, opening of this discussion, but of course, you know, in MATLAB, there is a, an optimization toolbox. This is something a lot of people are using. And so now we want also to show how to combine the best of both worlds. So be able to simulate a satellite scenario and be able to use optimization toolbox to optimize the situation, whether the number of satellites to cover a specific uh, area, uh, optimize the components so that you can, you know, have the best antenna, the best power supply to, to, to fit your, your needs and so on. And we've got new waveform generation for NAVIC, which is a standard used in, in India. <clears throat> we've been completing the GPS um, uh, reference applications. So a few other things, I'm not going to go into the details. It's, uh, it's more microscopic. So what I want to show you now is, if there is no question, if there, maybe I can pause for just one second, if there is any questions, any introduction question. I'm not monitoring the, the chat, so please, if, if, yeah, if, and I don't think the chat is, uh, is open anyway. Um, no questions, so okay. I'm going to talk about the orbit propagation and visualization here. There are just a few things I want to introduce. So we, we can use different um, prop orbit propagation tools. So Keplerian to body is just Earth and the satellite. It doesn't take into account the moon. It doesn't take into account uh, gravity uh, from other bodies and so on. So this is the the more the simplest one <laughs> if you if you want to have a, a, an initial rough. Um, uh, estimate. But then we also provide more dedicated uh, propagators that are going to take into account more uh, more um, features. The, the, the universe is not totally uh, spherical. Uh, the pool from the moon, the pool from the sun, the pool from other platforms and so on. So this is uh, something I will, I will illustrate next. Once we We've been defining our uh, scenarios. Once we define the satellites, their orbits, 
we, of course, what we are interested in is to establish a communication link. So we want to be able to mount an antenna uh, on the on the platform and steer the antenna so that it can look wherever I want. So this is something we can offer as well. And I will talk about the antenna toolbox and phase array toolbox later on. But basically, a lot of solutions now are used are using phased array antennas and to, to do beamforming, for instance, such as described here. And this is something we can combine with, with the satellite communication. So we've got this um, scenario capabilities and we can add some custom antenna on top of it. Uh, we've got a few examples. Uh, and here the example we've been uh, deciding to implement is some an example that shows how to use these capabilities to avoid interferences. Uh, make sure you can do a null in the direction of a, of an interference and these kind of things. Um, the access. So here the access again. It's the can you see me? Uh, the, that's a question we want to answer. So here we've got a scenario where we've got satellites that are moving, and this specific satellite has a conical sensor. And what we want to show here is the the area it covers and the fact that it can or cannot, you know, um, see. Uh, a specific ground station. So here everything is moving. We could have additional. Uh, here we can see that these two satellites are now in line of sight and so on. So very easy, very easy to use functions to to implement this this type of features. The goal here is really to make things as easy as possible. Uh, same same thing here with the communication link closure. Uh, here we've got a scenario where we've got two satellites and an intersatellite link that will allow us to, to establish communication between one station here and another one here, going from one satellite, so an uplink, an intersatellite link, and a downlink. And we want to be able to model this type of scenarios, which is quite generic. And, and we've got some very easy to use functions that will return when was my system able to establish a communication? So here we are between India and Australia, and we see that for 1500 seconds on uh, August 19th from uh, 8.55 to 9.20, I was able to establish the link. And so here we can very easily run uh, more complex scenarios than that and tell how often I can establish a link. And then of course derive some information as the the, the number of satellites that I need to to add, or do I need to add ground stations? Do I need to add multiple uh, 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 intersatellite links, and so on and so forth? So this is these are the basic functions. Of course, one of the very big topics these days is a low orbit satellites. And here, what we've been <coughs> providing is uh, some function that will also tell you uh, what is the Doppler uh, frequency. And the Doppler is going to change over time because the satellite is, conti is continuously moving. And the problem with these LEO satellites, especially when we are working at high frequencies, is that the Doppler can become very, very uh, large. And so making the synchronization uh, very difficult. There is also the latency. Uh, the latency can be changing over time. So these are functions that, that, we, can, uh, uh, that, that, that we can run to get all this information. And uh, finally, before I just open a, an example to show you how to how to implement these type of features, something that has been longly that has been requested since the first <laughs> time we introduced satellite communication toolbox uh, was performances. Our users they want to simulate uh, uh, scenarios that are 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. Uh, we've heard about 30,000 at some point uh, satellites. Uh, you know, with potentially quite long duration, uh, and 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 get that smoothly, uh, you know, in, in time that that is not exploding. And so here, our our benchmark for now has been a 1,000 satellite constellation. We run it for one day, 24 hours, uh, with a sampling time of 60 seconds, uh, and it needs to run in in less than than 10 seconds. Uh, so we really want to make sure that uh, we, we can tackle this type of, uh, of scenarios. 
we, we provide this example. This example is uh, a, you can run it uh, on uh, on the laptop. I typically run it on my laptop. It takes uh, it, it takes less than one minute to run, which is uh, fairly uh, uh, decent. And of course, we, we can achieve even better uh, performances on larger uh, computer dedicated to this task. But just to just to mention that optimizing performances, paying attention to performances, is something that has been very very important over the last uh, the, the over the, the releases since the beginning. Okay, and that's what I was mentioning a bit earlier. Um, that that that's the example I'm going to use to uh, to describe a, a few uh, important points in satellite communication toolbox. Uh, the ability to not only define a satellite constellation, not only define a custom antenna. So here, what we see this kind of Medusa or tomato. I, I I've got uh, people who are not familiar with satellites. have been asking uh, questions. Say, hey, what, what what is this? So this is the antenna pattern, and what we've been uh, using in this example is using the Iridium Next uh, satellite constellation, and we've been implementing the radiation pattern as it as it is described, uh, just to show that we can really uh, get something that is going to be close to the the final situation. And so now we also can uh, have trajectories, have the same viewer but from different perspectives. So the aircraft is here, uh, we can see the link that are can be closed and then the other satellites that are visible we can see uh, the trajectory we can change that of course we can define uh, attitudes for for the the platform it's not necessarily flying flat it can turn and the antenna is going to turn with the the platform and so on and so forth so this is something that uh, that is very important so before we talk about the link budget, let me go uh, quickly in MATLAB and show you a few, just this example so that I can explain uh, a little bit more in details the main functions. So here I'm going to go, oh, I need to, I need to put everything in, on this screen if you want to, to make it visible. In wireless communication, I'm going to navigate to the satellite communication toolbox and I'm gonna look at the examples. So that's something I was mentioning earlier. Uh, documentation, we are trying to organize the documentation to address dedicated topics, link budget, we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Uh, scenario generation, that's what I'm gonna highlight now. Uh, RF propagation and to end simulation, so you can also navigate like this. We highlight uh, the main functions, the main objects that are going to be used. So here we're going to use a satellite scenario. We're going to add satellites in this scenario. We're going to add platform in this scenario. We're going to add one uh, or two at here ground stations. Uh, and, and we see all the functions that are available. And in the examples, I'm going to be able to show a few examples. So here we've got the shipping examples, latency Doppler, comparing the uh, uh, orbit propagators. Uh, this uh, interference example I was mentioning, uh, making sure we can visualize the sky plot when we are dealing with GPS or GNSS receiver and so on and so forth. So what I'm gonna focus on now is just this, uh, this example. So the, the goal here, we've been using a, a use case where we want to to, to to define a platform, which is an aircraft flying from A to B, from airport A to airport B. And we have been using the ADSB because it's simple uh, to illustrate the, the topic. The ADSB is the system that the aircraft are using to uh, send their, to share their uh, position, uh, heading, velocity, and so on and so forth. But the, the few things I want to highlight, let me make it slightly bigger. Here, in a few lines of code, we create a scenario. A scenario is something called a satellite scenario. And it takes a few arguments, a start time, because we need to know where the satellites are located at a specific time. Uh, the stop time, the sample time. That's, that's basically it. 
And then we can define a viewer. The viewer is this um, uh, this uh, cesium-based viewer where we will see all the elements uh, moving. So then we want to define ground stations. Here we've got two airports. Since we are talking about satellite communication, we are going to consider these airports as ground stations. Same thing, I created a satellite, a satellite scenario, and which is called SC here. I'm going to add ground stations in this uh, satellite scenario. And these ground stations, they are the airport latitude, the airport longitude, and I can provide additional names. So here it's GFK and LFW. And then I can define a trajectory. So here we define a geographic trajectory, which is based on waypoints. So latitude, longitude, altitude. So we define the waypoints. Where is our platform going to uh, go, go through the time of arrival of all of these waypoints? So we can define um, trajectories where the, where the, the platform is going to accelerate, where it's going to fly at you know, constant velocity, for instance, and then decelerate for landing. So we can define this quite easily, and we define an object which is called a trajectory. Uh, we can visualize the, we can easily visualize with a function that is called geoplot in MATLAB, uh, visualize the trajectory that we've been uh, implementing. And then here we add this function. So this is something new in 2024A, uh, this platform. So we define the aircraft as a platform, which is associated to the scenario which has a specific trajectory, a name, and a visual 3D model. So here it's a liner. We just want to, to show a liner. So we can customize. If you're working with drones, if you're working with uh, helicopters, or, well, helicopters, maybe you, you're not so much interested in, in satellite communication. But uh, anything that, that is on Earth, you know, satcom on the move, that is flying, that is on a ship, you can define a platform attach a dedicated 3D model so that it looks good and animate the whole thing with the, sa the satellite flying over its head and ground stations potentially. And very quickly, because the yeah, time is flying, um, the, the next thing is I want to add satellites to my uh, scenario. And here we've been using the Iridium Next, that's what I was mentioning. So Iridium Next, we've got 11 satellites uh, on six orbital planes, so 66 uh, satellites in total. Uh, so this is the, the definition of the, of the, the orbital planes. Uh, the satellites, they are following one each other uh, at, um, with, with 32.7 degrees between satellites. So this is just the definition. And what we want to show here is how to create these satellites. So we define the true anomaly, the semi-major axis, the inclination, the eccentricity, uh, the, and the uh, argument of the periapsis. And then we define here Iridium satellites. This is an object that is going to contain the 66 satellites with one function call. So in a very limited number of function calls, and it could even be easier than that if I were using TLE files, I can define a complete scenario. Um, I, I'm not going to go too much into the details, but what I want to show you here is that you know, we've got these very high level functions that allow you to define a scenario, to attach satellite to the scenario, attach ground station, attach a platform, and then animate the whole thing and see, okay, when can satellite number one see ground station number one? When can satellite number six see uh, ground station number two? And so on and so forth. So we've got all these um, access intervals that are provided written in a table so that you can tell you know, how often can you see the, um, the, the, the ground station? Uh, and then, of course, can you establish a call? Uh, can you establish a communication? So this is what it's going to look like uh, in, the, in the scenario itself. <clears throat> OK, I, I'm, I just want to give you this, this very, uh, this very uh, high level vi visualization. Um, with this function, of course, we can tell, I, I mentioned we've got 66 satellites in Iridium Next, and we want to be able to tell, can my aircraft see at least one satellite at any point in uh, its uh, trajectory? 
And here we can easily visualize and, and run some computation to say, yes, it's OK. I will always have at least one satellite in my line of sight. I will always be able to communicate my information to at least one satellite. So just uh, very basic, uh, you know, MATLAB graphs here to show these kind of things. Uh, we, we can do more fancy stuff, but uh, very, very high level. If you've got specific questions, we can, of course, uh, have a dedicated discussion about that.